Jeff Ski here, and welcome to Fantasy House. Every week we have a different special guest give us an imaginary tour through their fantasy house. It is like MTV Cribs with a little bit of weirdness and cartoony unlimitedless. Is it unlimitless? No, limitless imagination and technology. It's the world's only NSFW real estate podcast. It's not safe for work. It's adults being creative being free sometimes it's really peachy and clean and sometimes people get nasty dirty so just be aware of that before you play this uh at your local temple or uh your local church or at uh, your job your corporate uh job where they don't allow you to uh think freely or speak freely uh <laughs> every episode is brought to you by me john chesky i'm your southern california realtor there's uh so much going on right now and you might be thinking i, I kind of want to buy a house because interest rates are low is now a good time well send me a message send me a message to fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com or go directly to my Instagram, J-O-N-S-H-E-F-S-K-Y. Why not? Just send me a message. I'd be happy to do a Zoom consultation with you. Or if you have two cups and a string that's long enough, we can do it that way. As long as it's distance and safe, we can do a great consultation. Uh, and uh, I'd be happy to. I love, love talking real estate. And I just love just meeting new people and connecting. So uh, go ahead and, and, and hit me up if you're interested. This episode, uh, I'm excited. It's uh, one of my road dogs. Uh, in the comedy or music world, when you say road dog, I mean someone that you've traveled with, you get to know people really well. So if you know someone for a year, but you know them for a year and you've been road dogging together, it's almost like you've been knowing them for three or four or five years because you've been in cars together, you trust them, you've been sometimes in some sticky or weird situations, out running crazy people or having to be strategic and do problem solving on the road. So you really get to know people. And uh, they become close friends for life. And this guy is one of them. Sean McBride is here today. He's a great comedian, a road dog, and uh, I'm excited to uh, hear about his fantasy house. Uh, so let's uh, let's move into it. Let's uh, let's, do, let's move into it now. In the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do it. <laughs> I think it's a more reflection of just like where society is really where you know people prefer knowing that it's real that's why reality tv is so popular it's like i think people just like i can't believe these people actually exist like that's a real person it's not you know like they, they've always forever <laughs> had that willingness oh, yeah. to accept something scripted or produced but i mean yeah like it, it's just it's easy to produce it's cheap and yeah. I think people are just in awe on the fact that these people exist, even though like so much of that bullshit is and actually produced. Well, I was going to say, like, I don't know if that's the best example because reality TV is so fake. And if you, you know, I, I, oh, I was just first... saying like, yeah, like, but like I was saying it as a reflection of society. Part of the reason, like, I know it is fake, but like people, it's so popular like wrestling. because people are like, it's, oh, that's real. Like that's just an actual person being it's... a basket case. The initial, the first, the first uh, reality show is wrestling. I mean, it's just like you guys know it's fake, right? And everyone's like, "Yeah, more, more, more!" It feels kind yeah. of real. It's like porn. You're just like, "Yeah, I know, I'm not getting it now, but it's high resolution and it's POV. It feels good enough. To, uh, don't change it, dude." It's like I loved wrestling. wrestling back in the day. Do you still watch wrestling? I so I, my relationship with wrestling was always that my good friends uh, were always into wrestling. So like, whether when I was a teenager, some of my best friends were into wrestling. So I would watch it with them when we were just eating and getting stoned. I'd be like, "Yeah, this is what we're watching. I'm stoned. I don't care anyways. I'm just having fun with my friends." And then when I got into comedy, all, all my friends in comedy were into wrestling. So I've just been around it, and I've never been crazy about it myself. But I, I've also never been cr- anti wrestling. I've loved like half of the wrestling yeah. celebrities, anyone that I've ever known or known of that knew other wrestlers, they've always been like stellar people. And yeah. Yeah. Know, they're big in the, it's like the porn stars and wrestling uh, are, they're all into comedy. So it's like, we all intermesh and like enjoy each other's like, Oh, it's just like, it's another performance art in another way. You know, exactly. it, it is, it is like that. I, I loved wrestling back in the day was a huge fan as a kid, then had a little bit of a lull. And then when they had the WWE attitude era, which was like the big, that was when I was in high school. Okay. Um, 
And I actually had my freshman year and sophomore year of high school, I did, because remember how like they would always do like, they just broke through the Spanish announcer's table. Like oh, yeah. that was like a theme oh. forever. Like it, it was such like, when you think about it now, it was like, man, they were always, they were constantly punching down on Mexicans. Always. Oh. Like it was like those, that Spanish announcer's table was going That's to break so every hard. time. You just didn't know when it was going to happen. Oh my God. And uh, so we, I did, for my my final for Spanish, my freshman year, I did a Spanish wrestling video. Uh, like we had to like do, you know how like you could always like, you know, what is your final? You had to do something. And so yeah. like, I was always like one of those, like I loved making videos and stuff. And I did a, a Spanish wrestling because it, it, it was just like, it was giving us an excuse to smash the table. And then the next year, then my, my sophomore year Spanish, I wanted to do it again. And yeah. I did, but like, it was like word had spread about the first one. So it was like, we did it like the follow-up, like the sequel was like, you know, the net almost like did it like it was a continuation the way they do Lucha, Lucha Libre wrestling yeah. where it's a soap opera and it continues. And uh, we did it. Like I dressed up my younger brother, like the undertaker. And he was like probably seven years old at the time. And we had him beat this big ass <laughs> football player on the football oh. team that everybody loved. Like, so it was like, people went nuts over it where it was just like a child because we turned my basement at my house that I grew up in into a, a wrestling ring. Cause we had like the, the post, like the pillars that would keep the house up. Oh yeah. I put rubber bands around them no and, and wrapped it and was able to get it. I couldn't do it all, but I was able to make a corner. Yeah. And so uh, if you shot from the angle where yeah. like you saw it, it looked like as we call it in the, in the film world, you cheated. Yeah. It. The, yeah the I shot, cheated yeah. it. I cheated it. And we did something like I had, uh, when I was like back, but this is all pre nine 11. Uh, I would go out to Kansas city, Missouri to visit family Yeah. on like, cause that was like, I was born in Kansas city even though I grew up in Massachusetts. I was born in KC. And so I would always go back for two weeks every year for, for like over summer to see yeah. my cousins, see all my family, all that shit. And I would have my cousin, Paul drive me across the state border to Kansas where fireworks were legal. And then I would buy fireworks and then I would always bring a bag with me that was empty that I would like put the fireworks in. And then on travel day back to Massachusetts, when everybody would be flustered and I knew my parents would be all over the fucking place and there'd be a million bags. I just throw this other bag in there filled with fireworks and check it oh onto God. the plane. And every year without fail, I would save up my fucking allowance Oh, yeah. And buy all, like, literally go, I'd have, like, two or $300, and I'd spend it all on fireworks. And then I'd go back to Massachusetts, where fireworks were very, very much illegal. I mean, you had to go states away at the time to be able to acquire fireworks. And I was the kid that had fireworks. Oh, yeah. So I had a shit ton of fucking fireworks. And remember how Monday Night Raw used to start, and it was always like... Oh, yeah. You know? And it was like, duh, 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 duh. they'd have like the, all the fireworks going off in the pyrotechnics and everybody going fucking well, would crazy. Would you actually light off fireworks while it was so happening? So I, I <laughs> set off fucking sparklers. I put sparklers in the oh, turnbuckles. And then we made a WWE sign because it was just like the scribbles. Remember it was like WWF and it yeah. was like they'd gone where it was like the block letters to a scribble. And that was like the Attitude Era. Yeah, and it could just like, um, here you go. And so I, I had hand drawn it on a, on a, a, you know, one of those like big ass white, uh, you, you know, like the poster board size paper yeah. and put that on the wall. Cause I couldn't just paint on the, on the wall down in the basement, but I had to have the WWE logo. And so we were playing on my stereo. I had recorded the raw song oh off the computer God. and then blasted it. And then we like did it. It was like, all right, we got one fucking take nobody fucked this up and i mean I'm with actual pyrotechnics old. just kids with dude. actual pyrotechnics and we oh, did it and dude. i didn't tell my mom because i knew once we did it she oh, yeah. was gonna be fucking furious because i had had all these kids over say we're like shooting like the follow-up to my masterpiece film with that which had been the spanish wrestling video one yeah <laughs> um my my follow-up the big sequel that everyone was anticipating and uh, i knew we'd only get one take at it so we did it. And I mean, dude, we shot this fucking thing. And I mean, you just see like, you know, duh, duh, duh. and I had like the camera coming down the steps as like you're hearing the music blasting, the oh, lights yeah. are off and there's sparklers fucking going. And so you see the ring ropes and everything, got the sparklers in the fucking house, smoke everywhere. 
bring the camera up to the WWE sign, like as the song's coming to its crest and you see the smoke past you, like going by the side. It was just a fucking beautiful shot. And then all of a sudden you hear from upstairs, shot solving this product. And it was like before you, there was no digital editing. So you couldn't like go back and do it. So like on the cut, I had to like rewind the fucking tape because like oh, yeah. that was where I had to cut. Like it was like, all right, time to fucking face the music. But I knew I had gotten the shot and we were good. Wow. I was controlling the camera. And so my mom was like, what the fuck? My buddy, Ken Ingalls, who's like, he was having an asthma attack. We had to open up the storm hatch. Fucking smoke is pouring out of the basement. Oh my <laughs> Cause I, God. I, you know, I wanted it to be big. So I took like an entire pack of fire, uh, not fireworks, but sparklers and put them in there. Like, so it's like 10 oh, yeah. sparklers going at once on both these turnbuckles. There was no, it's three turnbuckles. Boom, boom, boom. Um, but I had it like, you know, coming around and then all that shit. My mom's like, what the fuck are you doing down there? <laughs> My buddy's literally puking because he's inhaled so much smoke oh, out so of the backyard. Yeah. And I was like, she's like, what? I'm like, don't worry. Like, that's it. That's it. That's it. We had to like open up all the doors in the house, like let it air out. And then once the smoke calmed down enough, then we went back in and we filmed all the matches. And I mean, it was oh, literally like there'd be pinfalls. Uno, dos, <laughs> oh, it was a lot of that. And then uh, we had the, um, what is it, ceiling tiles. You know how those, those always will like will break easy? Yeah. We would set those up on, uh, we set it up for like the announcer's table with the span two guys in suits are sitting there and they've got like those chalk ceiling tiles with two tables like holding it up and they're sitting with two tables behind it but it was all just because we that was the one thing you just had two had kids to. you had two kids sitting there in suits like kids that were my suits. well those they were, they were they were the spanish announcers oh it's so funny and so then they were the two guys that i knew that spoke spanish the best my buddy dave and uh this kid mike mitchell and i was like both of them sound stuff. like they, that doesn't say much i knew I mean, dave and mitchell was like, yeah <laughs> But they were they were better and they were buddies of mine and it was just like, yeah. I just needed them saying like sentences and then like I was going to be the one that got credit for producing the whole thing and it was just me trying to like essentially lie my way through the fact that I had learned no Spanish whatsoever the entire thing oh. and uh, we did it and it was like this is like one of the fucked up like you remember like remember how they used to have like those uh, wrestling dolls like that you could wrestle uh, oh, yeah. wrestling buddies yeah we had one where we dressed it up like owen hart who had like the guy the wrestler that had fell from the ceiling and and like died and like yeah, oh, I one of the matches oh, we yeah. strapped one of the wrestling buddies to the ceiling and dropped it down and we're like did like did, a parody was it, hart of, or was it brett hart? no no owen hart was the one that died that passed owen away yeah okay. that died yeah yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah um, but like, which was fucking awful. Like one of those, like, what were you, we, we, you know, like that's in terrible taste <laughs> just, but what, you know, wanted to just do something fucking crazy and insane and epic. And, uh, so do you still have it on tape? I, so it like my oh, family I don't like went through, going, dude, I don't like where this answer's going. It's, it's somewhere on a, but it's like one of those, it was that in between era where it was like, you know, before mini DV cams, after VHS cams. Yeah. Where there was like several different types That's of... That's when we did stuff too. My, my family too. Like those weird little And tapes. it's like, so like my, like we like moved and like I moved out to California and then like my mom passed away and like my dad moved in with like, and so like just a lot of shit got lost over the years. Oh yeah, it happens. Um, and so, like, it's it might be somewhere, but, I mean, I haven't seen the video in 20 fucking years. And it was, like, one of the best things I ever did in high oh, school man. was the Spanish wrestling video one and two. <laughs> oh, good. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, dude. That's so right. Uh, That's so cool. I hadn't thought about that in a while. And um, and that, that in, inspired, I mean, you were already a filmmaker when you were at that age. And now, I mean, what are you doing, obviously, besides stand-up, just so our guests know what you're up to? Like what's been going on? Because you've been into filmmaking since I've known you too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've really kicked up the producing um, side a lot more. I mean, you know, I would go road dogging it for fucking months on end back in the day. Like, because you and I started out as as open micers. Yeah. Like when we were like just fucking. Yeah. On the beat, like grinding and just like hitting, and, and I mean. Patton Oswalt talked about it one day, one time where he was like that 
time in his life where you're an open micer and like you can never go back to that like it's just this time where it's like it's all about comedy you don't really know what you're doing you're with a bunch of other people that don't really know what they're doing but like yep. you see the people you're hanging out with and a lot of times you're basing it off of like they're funnier than these other fucking animals that are up here going out and so it's like you get a little and it and it's just it's a fucking beautiful time to be a comedian like before you know business gets involved and all this other shit yeah um but uh yeah to, it, it was like you know like just i was kind of painting the picture since you and i go like way 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 back man i mean yeah. i remember your westwood bruco room <laughs> and how much fun that Brutal was bruco. oh man dude that place and was it was it awful. was the it was it was like it was like surfing choppy waves where everyone like it's like you were out there and it's like it would you it would come in waves and i mean it was comic to comic you might have you know a minute or like a 10 minute period where a bunch of like 15 really cool kids from ucla come in and yep. they really dig the show yep. and they're having a blast and then literally and you might get to play like the you know it's almost like a a relay race right where it's just like all right like this person went up and got him and like you pass it off to the next one and they got him and then it's like the next third person goes up and they eat shit and that fucking whole oh, crew yeah. that was great fucking left yep and now it's like eight or nine people that are just other comics and maybe one weird person there's like rooms like the and i don't i, I you know i don't live near the valley you know how it's like back in the day like you could literally shoot across los angeles hit a mic in orange oh, yeah. county like when you don't have do responsibilities that. and other things going on other Broke, than county, like you can 25 dollars on gas and you're going around all these rooms they're all disappointing you're depressed it's three in the morning me and me and angela mm, what am i even doing we used to eat, used to eat a burrito each. we used to eat a burrito each and then oh, and then buy a torta for us to split it was so depressing it would be at three in the morning the only win you could have the only thing you had control over the only but the only thing food. that would have been more depressing would have been doing it by yourself you so know true. and to be so doing true. it with angelo of all people and to like look back on it like when you don't like going back to what you were saying about you know like you can spot somebody that's crazy now and like no like immediately like red flags start going up it's like do not engage but like back then it's just like <laughs> you're open and talking and you're talking and then it's like you'll be five minutes into a conversation and then it's just like wait a second this person totally doesn't have their oh, shit yeah. together like at all Oh, like yeah. they're an absolute disaster and here i am and i've i've befriended them i've reached out to them and as many times as that kind of shit that attitude doesn't work you yeah. know one time out of 100 99 times out of 100 it's not going to work and you're like what the fuck am i even doing but the one time out of 100 you having that attitude is what leads you to meeting someone like a angelo bowers yep yeah. and like what a fucking you know and it's just like you have to and like that's like the beauty of it like i, I don't know when you I, I totally met angelo out at open mics as many many oh, yeah. comics did like just going and it's just like one of those he was a stop on a fucking dime when you heard him talking onto a microphone and you had to go listen you went back in, you went um, back into the even the most awful we, want, like, uh, like, we, we gotta yeah. go back in real quick angela's on stage yeah yeah dear lord um, so i just um and you'd be like i gotta go back inside real quick yeah i don't want to miss yeah. this oh my god yeah, yeah yeah no i mean he was so so oh. fucking good and like such a but like also like i think back to that time mm -hmm. in my life and like the people that stand out the most you know of which you're one of them angelo definitely josh adam myers chris dunham dunham was my fucking me and that he was my like he was my angelo at that time like just the dude i was inseparable he, with he's your just road going, dog and just went everywhere with him just went oh yeah you like hit everything like just kind of knew like all right like where am i going who's gonna be there you know like you were yeah. like like how you know it's like all the people that i hated in high school that would play that kind of shit it's like that's how i'd be like in comedy like whoa yep. who there's a lot of fucking crazy psychopaths that i'm gonna see tonight but like i want to make sure there's at least someone that i can talk to totally like uh you got you know, that's how life is in general right like it's crazy it's like you want you need to have community mm -hmm. it's an essential part of our lives it's community what however it is if it's just one other person totally. or if it's a hundred people at your you know your church or your temple it's essential to us for our happiness to, to not just be alone 
Oh, and, yeah. You know, you have yeah. to connect with people. Be like, I love you. I love hearing what you have to say. And I, and I love through the good times and bad. Like, it's so, so important. And, and I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that that's, you know, it's some, sometimes it's a detriment to us. It's why we're such tribal morons so often. Yeah. But, but it's also, it's just an essential ingredient, like, for happiness. Uh, there's very few people mm-hmm. that can they can live without that. And, and the ones that can live without that, you have to wonder, like, are they still even happy? Like I know some, hermits. Yeah. Are, are you happy though being a hermit? Like you're, you seem like you're just going insane, but they seem like they're like, just start, get away from me. Like a rattlesnake. Ah! And you're like, okay, okay, okay. You're, but for, for most yeah, people, like, you have I have to be together and connect. Oh, totally. Part of the reason, like I love this studio is it forced me to get my buddy Cole to come over and us to do something. And we made something and it was so funny great. And it's something we're both in line with, which is just like, let's just fucking absolutely skewer these fuckers um, and have some fun with it and get to hang out with a friend at the same time. Like if you and I ever did something like that was, that would be great. Like when I, I worked at the NFL network from 06 to 09, when I first came to LA and my favorite part about that job was I liked so many people there. And so like when I would go to work, it was like I was hanging out with friends. And that was how I was like the TV station I worked at when I was in college. It was like just a bunch of my friends that like we used to make fucking high end videos and have great editing systems. And it's like I got out to L.A. and somewhere along the way lost all that. And I want to I want to bring it back and I want to make a studio and a place where comics can come in. And there's a green screen and there's a camera and there's producers and VPs and talents and people that can take their ideas out of their head and immediately make it happen. And yeah. then get it out there and just fucking build stuff and that freedom of expression that isn't anywhere else. Like that, that's what I want. I know all, all things comedy and like those other places are doing stuff, but I mean, what I'm talking about, I don't think anybody's really doing that. So I think it's great though. And, and even if they are doing stuff, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't just do, just do what you feel you're excited about, man. And and if, yeah, if you want to go over and do that, then those, you know, I hope that all things comedy oh, can do to just be an institution. You'll go over there, but like, Make your own stuff with your voice and your your brand is is part of the excitement right now, right? Totally, man. Totally. That and that's my favorite part is just uh, you know doing it and then getting the work. And that, I want to get to a point where it's like I can go to an even bigger studio and have more comics coming through and just have a place where it's like good conversation. People are joining each other's company and then making something and then turning around and while we're driving to the gig, somebody's cutting it up. And it's going on. You know Someone's what I mean? on the laptop like, on Final Cut while you're driving. Some fucking yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like I mean, or somebody, you know, some fucking young hungry kid that wants to learn. <laughs> you know, how, how do you Intern. see yourself when you're like, you know, like like let's say you're old and you're like 90 years old. How do you see yourself? Like, what have, what have you accomplished? And like, what what are you doing? When I'm 90, um, I want to still. I want to have like kind of moved past like i've done you know all my ideas of you know not all of my you never want to stop having ideas but like just kind of like filled that need of like all right i've made movies i've made tv shows i've worked with so many people where it's like nobody is there like just to be at that point where you can literally walk into any any room in the world and they're going to put you up like i want that like i you know to be just like a comedy og like yeah Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, man. Like, did you see that documentary, the two of them? Like, just, I mean, they're almost pushing a hundred. I can't remember what streaming platform it was on, but, uh, I mean, it was just the two of them, like, would meet up every night, have dinner, like, watch TV, like, oh, yeah. watch the shows, judge it, talk about it, like, still fucking funny and with it. And, like, you know, it's like, that's just, like, his comedy buddy from the very fucking beginning. And I, I, I loved that. I, it was one of the most inspiring documentaries I've seen in all of this. And I've, I've always loved that aspect of it. Like, no, there's no stage in the world that would ever tell Mel Brooks or Carl Reiner they couldn't go up and be funny. I mean, any place would be, oh, my God, yes, please go do it. Um, I uh, like like George Burns. I remember like he was like 100 years old and still fucking doing it, man. Yeah. Still doing it. Like that's, I want to be, I got into a habit, like early on, I always would perform on my birthday. Like I don't like not being booked on my birthday. Um, my first mentor in comedy, Vic Dunlop, who, who passed away in 2011. I remember Vic. Yeah. Uh, who he got his start on the Richard Pryor show with uh, Robin Williams and John Witherspoon. Uh, they were all fucking chilling up in heaven, man. Um but my, the last show we did together was on my birthday in 2011. And he, he 
uh, went into a coma a few days after that and then passed away probably 10, 11 days after that. Um, and, uh, I just, you know, I've always just loved performing like, you know, but like that, like it meant a lot to me, like that I got to like on my birthday because my, my mother had passed away in 2007. And so like my birthday was always like, it's a hard day for me. Just kind of like always thinking about my mom. It's not the same, not having her there. And so it's like, I always liked having that distraction. And it was like, you know, like if it, it, I almost felt like my mom bought him a little bit more time because like if he had died like before my birthday like that, like who knows what kind of like emotional damage I could have done. But like I had one of the best shows I ever had in my entire career up until that point on my birthday, saying happy birthday to someone else that it was their birthday in the crowd because I didn't make a big, no one knew that it was my birthday. I didn't even realize that it was my birthday because I just didn't say anything. I was just like, normal regular show and uh it was like very surreal singing happy birthday to someone else on my birthday but like i was killing like i was literally giving this like big woman a like a lap dance <laughs> for her birthday and yeah. the place is going fucking ape shit and vic like you know that night i dropped him off and literally the last thing he said to me because uh, i didn't talk to him like it was like a couple days like i usually would talk like when it was like hey we got a gig we got this but it was like I think that was a Saturday and then that Tuesday he went in for uh, a heart procedure and he slipped into a coma after they put him under anesthesia. And uh, the last thing he said to me was like, Sean, you're getting so damn smooth up there. Like right as he was like, you know, at the end of the night, like just yeah. like one of those, like gave me one and I was like, yeah. thanks man. Like, I love you brother. And like, it, that, that was it, you know? And uh, I had been a mess not having that. And so I've always, I, I don't know. I've always, uh, you know, like that, like that was the last gig with him was on my birthday, which is crazy. Um, this year, though, of course, with COVID, I you know, no shows. I actually had to celebrate my birthday, <laughs> <laughs> which is weird. Oh, dude, let's uh, let's go through your fantasy house, huh? Uh, let's do that. So there's a drone flying over your uh, fantasy house. What are, what are we seeing? What's the location and what's it look like? It's 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 in Los Angeles, um, and it's it's a regular. It's a, it's a regular house. I like where I'm at now, but the thing about my house is I have underground tunnels connecting me to my other friends' houses. That's where the big money investment is going to be, is access to all my friends underground as well as LAX. That was the biggest uh, expenditure in the house was my own tunnel to LAX. Oh, dude, you're so Elon Musk. Well, you know, dude, it, it's like the amount of time wasted that could be spent creating while we're sitting in traffic. It's just unacceptable. It's insane, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Very much so. Very much so. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a regular house, uh, and it, everything's connected underground. Um, but uh, I, uh, I, I want to have it where, um, <laughs> you know, also underground, like, that's where like you kind of have, you know, the fun things built in. Like I want to have a big ass fun room that, you know, where it's, it's like you have it where it's like, it's big enough and it's built. It's almost like this giant basement, like a finished basement. Yeah. I had a finished basement as my house as a kid. And there was, and I told you about it with the, the rest Spanish wrestling video. Yeah. There was the back hatchway. And what I loved about that was people always had access and they could get in there. And then in the basement, it was like, we had, you know, the gaming system, there was a ping pong table, like a, uh, pop a shot like all that i want to hear like the weezer version of, of this in my basement i yeah. feel fine oh. exactly exactly we got everything to do our rest and so i wanted to have uh, a custom-made beer pong table in there and then unlimited cardboard standouts of harvey weinstein and peyton manning why uh, them that way <laughs> So I'm, I'm, yeah, wrapping up. Yeah, Harvey, uh, car, giant, uh, my buddy, producing partner Michael's just uh, walking by, heading back down to the studio. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I want to have uh, cardboard cutouts of Harvey Weinstein and Peyton Manning, like just that, that can be thrown away and interchanged. That way, when you're playing beer pong, if you miss a shot, you can punch Harvey Weinstein or Peyton Manning in the face. That's hilarious. Right, two of the most awful human beings of all time. I don't know much about Peyton Manning, but I've heard Harvey Weinstein's a real pos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, 
Peyton Manning's just, he's fucking annoying. It's more, it's more that like, I think I'm also going to have it where like maybe even allow it. So it's like one of those, you know, printers that set up for it. So you can pick the person you hate the most. That's hilarious. Like if you hate Tom Brady, like you can get a Tom Brady cardboard cutout um, and just knock, knock its fucking head off. It's hilarious. therapeutic and it's not actually violent. You know, I like how you can either beat up a Super Bowl cheater or a rapist. Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Justice at Sean's house, the McBride, the McBride basement. All right, keep going, keep telling us. So, the the basement also has a a regularly updated shoe room with new shoes, all various sizes. That way, when any whenever anybody comes over, uh, they can they get to leave with a a new pair of sneakers. Oh wow! Something fresh, something sick. Yeah, regularly oh. updated, only the best shit. And everybody gets to go home with something, all sizes, whatever. What What do you use? What are you going to do if, if you're showing us the machine? What Which Which ones are you going to get? My for my what shoes am I going to get? Yeah. Um, I'm going to get the remember the old Chris Rock Penny Hardaways. No, Chris Rock had Penny. shoes. No, no. So they had Chris Rock played Lil Penny Hardaway in the in the commercials. Oh it was, yeah, dude, I yeah, told you yeah. that. Yeah, and they had I the best those commercials. shoes ever. The, the 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 pennies, man. They were they were the best. And so that would be my shoe. I would have unlimited pennies. I'd be rocking those. Great. I like the uh, the Adidas Sambas, the shell tops, uh, the Samoas. A lot of that. Adidas you do stuff. like those that Adidas. Part. You're always wearing those. I wear more New Balance now. But you used to. You used to have those, used, those goofy I used Adidas. To wear black Adidas uh, Samo. Like I think they're Samoas. Is what they're called, but I would they're wear, I wear the cookies fucking into the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. And also, I mean, everything always stocked up. Any type of food, candy, all the diabetes shit you want, including year-round Girl Scout cookies, will oh, be dude. stocked up in the kitchen. Thin you know, it'll in the be freezer, please. Um, you, you know, like all the screeners, all that. Any movie you want, it can be screened down there. But the big thing is, uh, I want to also have like a indoor like lazy river Ooh, indoor? kind of like on the perimeter remember how yeah. like uh, the, the tunnels in uh ghostbusters 2 yeah yeah were, like, slime. okay so picture take out all that slime but you have a flowing clean water yeah clean water uh you know no like salt water or anything like fresh water going underneath and it's uh it's a lazy river kind of hammering them and it's lit and there's there's lights, so it's not like super scary, but like yeah, you can go in there with the kids, just take a nice cool like especially after a long frustrating day, you just hit the lazy river that uh, you know runs underneath the L.A. River all across town, and then comes back. And what what is like the what does the, the surroundings look like though? If you're underground, like what kind of tunnels are you going through? Well, so I mean, the tunnels are like I said, very similar to the tunnels you saw in uh, in. Go, go, Okay. Go, uh, go, uh, Ghostbusters 2 and Ninja Turtles 2. The turn of the Remember century, the New York sewer, uh, New York yeah, subway. It's, like, that, it's that works. type of thing where it's like it's workable. You can walk around like there's space. Okay. It's not like you're tunneling like you're Andy Dufresne's in Shawshank Redemption. Thank you. Like it's not that. It's Thanks comfortable. Thanks for getting that picture for us. Yeah. Well, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah Like totally. it's not like you're, you know, because then, you know, people that uh, are claustrophobic, well, but they can't come down. And I, I don't want to be dealing with that. People freaking out. I want them to come down to the compound and be comfortable. Totally. Totally. All right. Well, take us to a, uh, take us to like a, a kitchen now. I, I definitely want to see kitchen and bathrooms. Always, always excited about that. <laughs> see, I, I mean, that's one of see that that's like that stuff, like cars and kitchens and bathrooms. Like to me, all that's important is like the necessities. You know, I don't really care about look like that's, you know, like that to me is like, you know, my fiance, Amy, like those are decisions that I would just bequeath to her yeah. and I would answer every question that she asked me with what I thought she wanted to hear. Yeah. I wouldn't engage her in a discussion. I would just sign off on whatever she fucking wanted what a good just husband. to not have to deal with it. <laughs> the basement and the lazy river, those are more the projects that I would want to take on. So to me, it's like what I like about I, I like it's you know a reg a regular bathroom. You got enough space to put all your shit all over the place. Yeah. Uh, um, 
you know, you're not cramped. Um, I like the, the marble floors that aren't, you know, you aren't going to slip, but kind of feel like you aren't, uh, just like in a bathtub. Uh, I do want to have a jacuzzi that is the size of a pool. Like you can actually swim. Oh, I love in a it. Jacuzzi. And that's something that I would want in the bathroom because when I was a little kid, before we moved to Massachusetts, we lived in Omaha and our next door neighbors had this huge fucking jacuzzi. And what I remembered was I could like, I was one of my like memories, first memories as a kid was uh, like, just like we could swim in the jacuzzi. Like I remember like jumping oh, off one awesome. side, hitting it and then like having to paddle a couple times to get to the other side and thinking, holy shit, I'm swimming in 95 to 100 degree water right now. Oh, it sounds so great. And, uh, and, and I've always, I've always wanted to recreate that. And there's been a couple casinos that in you know, the Inn of the mountain gods in Mescalero, New Mexico has a big ass hot tub jacuzzi. That's like built out of stone. One of those ones where it's like, yeah, you're, you're when you can swim and you can essentially swim in it and whenever i'm working one of those gigs i always will like go underwater and like just swim side to side and that oh, yeah. in my head i feel like i'm three years old swimming in that jacuzzi so great. in Omaha, nebraska again and so that 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 would be important but to be able to recreate a big enough size so adults could enjoy it all right so take us to uh what's what's another room that we got to see um you know i i would say the 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 bedroom yeah um, the bed the bedroom you know it, it's a it's a big comfortable bed for me and my yeah. lady but also like when our cat jumps in and in the event we have a, a kid one day it's like everybody you know if they wanted to cuddle together we could but also like if everybody just needed like their own space and yeah. have a little you know like you could just all be in there like a big big very comfortable bed and then uh I've always liked the idea. I mean, I, I like falling asleep. I always like pass out on the couch at night, but I love doing that in the TV. And so when you have these big ass, I, I rather than have like the screener on the wall, I like those, the HD TV projectors. Like I like full projection. Like, almost like you can, everybody can be sitting up with their back rested against the bed. And I mean, oh, like yeah. it's almost like a mini movie theater right there in the room. Um, but that, so you, you have that, but I like, I, I always like like the electronic type setups where it's like, there could be like a nice painting that like comes down from the wall and like takes its place. Like when you aren't using the projector, but then it like lifts. What would into be the on that painting? What would it look like? What would you have? Uh, so my, my uh, fiance's father is a painter and a lot of the paintings we have in our place are his. And I love it. He's such a, he's an amazing abstract artist. And so, I think it would be one of his like big epic ones. Like he's got like, tri- I, I don't know what the exact name it's like to me, it's like a triple header where it's like three things, but it's like a big ass piece. Oh, it's awesome. All three sections. Is there a main, uh, is there a main color to it or, or a, a, he does a bunch of different colors, um, oh, wow. but it's a, a, bu- a lot of his stuff. And I mean, I would like our house, like it's just, it's a lot of his pieces all around the house. And I would just stick with that. Um, and I would have even more of it. Um, that's awesome. Just, uh, just all over the house. But yeah, I would have like his, he's got this epic one that's three and I would have that descend from the wraps and then go back up. That would be pretty cool. Just, and a nice tribute awesome. to him. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's like, I don't, you know, it's a, it's a cool setup to me. It's always, everything's about the people. Like you can have everything in the world, but if you can't have the people there to enjoy yeah. it, like what's the fucking point I, well, you're all about community. I know, dude. We've talked about it, and I, I, it's like it just comes through in, in everything. Is there anything else in your house that we got to see? Because I mean, that, this house is awesome. I mean, so long as I got a, you know a, a stocked kitchen with plenty of Girl Scout cookies and the people that I love, I'm good, man. I, that's a hell of a house, right? Uh, I love it, dude. It's great. Uh, I, I uh, will not turn down eating uh, Thin Mints uh, while while looking at abstract art, dude. So, and uh, don't you worry, Chefsky. I am gonna build a tunnel out to San Dimas. <laughs> So you can, it's going to take you a little while to get out there. Oh, dude. San Dimas I, tunnels rule! Yeah. San Dimas football rules! Uh, have you seen Bill Ted yet, by the way? I have not seen the new one yet. I'm excited to see it, though. I, I need, I need oh, to actually, I have uh, a really good friend and his wife uh, who are um, 
special effects artist. They actually worked on it and built the robot. Oh, you got to get them on the pod, man. I, I know I'm working on it. Well, she's uh, due, she's pregnant and due this month and like they're extremely busy no with excuse. stuff going on. But yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm excited to see it. And um, I'm excited to see her fast. So thank you. Hashtag blessed guest. I'm so glad I got to see the inside of this place. Uh, where can people find you? You can find me across all social media platforms, except for TikTok and Snapchat. Cause I'm not a child at <laughs> Sean S McBride, S E A N S McBride. And then also uh, check out my other pages at the laugh bureau and at the cosmic comedy show. Awesome. Thank you so much for making the time to do this, dude. I appreciate being on here. I, I love you, you Shevsky. I love you too, man. My road dog. It's freaking awesome getting to see you right now. It is always nice getting to see you, brother. I look forward to doing it in the flesh. And uh, I look forward to the next time I get to tell someone, let Shevsky be Shevsky. <laughs> what was that from? Where did you say that? I love that. When I was like, somebody wanted a script because I was putting together like a, a commercial shoot. And so I booked a bunch of comics and they wanted a script. And I was like, I, I don't want to tell, like, I'm booking people, like, based off, I know they're going to be yeah. funny, and I want to have them do something. He's like, well, I, I think we should really see something. And I snapped at him. I was just like, let Shevsky be Shevsky. Like, as I was like, oh, yeah, dude. People, I'm like, you got to let Shevsky be Shevsky. I totally forgot. Dude, yeah. Dude, <laughs> so fun. That was, I, I remember that, that gig, too. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That was a fun one. That, to be an actor. To be an actor. Um, well, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out this episode. Go ahead and uh, give Sean a follow and check out his his good stuff and keep up with him, man. Uh, if you guys, if, you're, if this is your first time listening, hit the subscribe button. Give us a review. One, two, three, four. How many stars do you want? Whatever you think we deserve. This is America. You, you eight stars. You decide. Eight stars. Give us eight stars, guys. Um, and uh, whatever stars, it just would mean the world to me if you took the time to. Uh, to to give us a review and if you're a regular listener and you're already subscribed hit the share button send this episode to some butty all right you guys thank you so much for tuning in everyone stay safe be silly have fun 